Hi everyone, Ali Jane's here. Welcome to all my new viewers and subscribers. I'm off to see Harry Potter now. I'll meet you back here after the intro with a movie review. She can't cook, she can't clean, she enjoys the fun of things in life. Phew, that was a fast 146 minutes. How is it that Britain has so many brilliant actors? Such a tiny country. Tiny. Rafe Fiennes was fabulous as always. Crazy Luna and her crazy dad were spectacularly crazy. And speaking of crazy, Helena Bonham Carter. She is the queen of cool roles in movies. I heart her. <laughs> And of course, there was brooding Snape. So much brooding going on. The theater I was at had this enormous cardboard poster of Snape that I was really hoping to sneak off with, but alas, it was not to be. There were people watching. This Harry Potter movie, The Deathly Hallows Part 1, was not an action-packed film, but if you'd read the books, you would know that going in. The action and mayhem will all be in Part 2. The movie was pretty faithful to the books, which is good, because they're good books. Parts of the story seemed a little bit thin, but they did have a lot of story and a bazillion characters to cram into 146 minutes. So all in all, I think they did a pretty good job. And even spoiler alert! You are about to experience a plot spoiler. If you would like your movie to remain unspoiled, simply mute your sound until the flashing warning goes away. Otherwise, carry on. And even though I knew that Dobby was going to die, and I had already cried about it when I read the book, I still cried like a little baby when he died in the movie. Thank you guys for all the fun Harry Potter responses last week. Mwah! Even though I'm a die-hard Snape girl, looking at you, k Boppet, peace, love, and dorkiness, and TTK fangirl, it was nice to hear some other perspective and be reminded of all the great characters like Crazy Luna and Witty Ron, who had some pretty good dialogue in this movie. Back on the topic of brooding actors, and such a good topic it is, British actors have brooding down. Is this like a requirement for being British? First of all, you have Snape, Alan Rickman. As discussed previously. But then we have my other all-time favorite, Colin Firth, aka Mr. Darcy, brooder extraordinaire. And then there's Daniel Craig and Clive Owen and Robert Pattinson. The list is endless! Except that those are all the ones that I could think of. But still, there's a lot of brooding there. All this talk of brooding and Harry Potter characters reminds me of one of my favorite holiday movies, Love Actually. It's that time of year again, so I will probably drag it out this weekend, eat pie, and cry happy tears at the end. It combines my two favorite British brooders, Alan Rickman and Colin Firth, plus Hugh Grant, who is not so much a brooder, but more of a sad puppy facer, but still good, and Bill Nye, also not a brooder, but he is a Harry Potterer, and he's hilarious in this movie. Oh, happy, happy holidays! Totally off topic, but super awesome. I filmed a horror movie with Ted Raimi. It was so much fun. We filmed in this huge Victorian house, and it was nighttime, so it was super creepy. Now, Ted Raimi knows his horror. He's been in the Evil Dead movies, The Grudge, Drag Me to Hell, and a ton of others. So it was a real pleasure to work with somebody who is a true horror pro. Plus, he's about the nicest most supportive director you can get. A genuinely great guy. The crew members had all worked with him before and so everyone had a really great rapport. There was a bunch of horror special effects makeup, not on me sadly, but on some of the other actors and it was really cool to watch the makeup artist work. The whole shoot was a pretty awesome experience. Alright, I'm off to eat turkey and pie and whatnot, so here is your question of the week. Who is your favorite brooding actor? Doesn't have to be British, just brooding. I love me some brooding actors. Do actresses brood? I can't think of any, but if you can, feel free to enlighten me. Leave a comment or a video response below. Happy Thanksgiving, lovelies! Needy Dog, otherwise known as Gypsy, spent my entire visit sprawled across my lap. Don't believe me? Check out this picture. She's not a tiny dog either. She takes up at least half the couch, and she put my legs to sleep flipping through one of those hotel magazines that tells you how great the city you're in is, and a vision of pies and cakes leapt out of the page. Mm -hmm. 